Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've posted a video here. I had a baby, he's a year old now, but that past year has been absolutely psycho for me with business and life and everything. So unfortunately, YouTube has taken the back burner, but I am here today to share with you five things that I wish I knew or I wish I did differently when trying to heal my gut for the first time. I think these tips are going to resonate with a lot of you, so I hope that you enjoy. And before I jump into these tips, I do want to let you guys know that I am doing, I'm currently creating a six week or 60 day, sorry, gut reset challenge program. It will only be run twice a year, but you can do it from anywhere in the world. I will be sharing more details soon on it, but make sure that you are following me on Instagram so you're getting updates of all of that. It is going to be an insanely incredible reset challenge. I will be doing it along with you. I will be checking in with you weekly. There's so much content, education, information, PDF downloads, all of that good stuff will be there for you guys to help you along with this journey. My goal is to have it begin October 1st. It's a little ambitious, but I have a lot of work to do within these next few weeks. And if I can do it, we will be launching the first round of the program October 1st. And then we will probably be doing it about a year later or six months later. I have to kind of sort out the logistics, but that is coming and it's only going to be run twice a year. So you don't want to miss it. If you're the type of person that needs guidance and support through a cleanser or reset, and you're wanting to do that with me and have my help, you will have it. So make sure you keep your eyes out on my Instagram. It's linked down below. It's holistic homeopath. And I will be there sharing a lot of information on when to expect this program. But getting into the video, um, one thing I will say just right off the bat is when I first started working on improving my gut for the first time, I had gone through a lot of research and online content and blog posts and everything. And so I started learning about leaky gut and that's when I was like, oh, I need to heal my gut. So the first thing that I wish I had done differently at the time was not follow a bunch of just like bloggers, um, and, and rather go to a professional. I spent a lot of money and a lot of time following just blog posts because I would take one person's opinion on how to fix the gut and implement it and it didn't work and I was feeling worse or things were happening and then I would go to the next blog and do the same and spend the money on their supplements that they recommended and done the same and over and over. I wasted almost a year and probably close to like $8,000 just trying to heal my gut. And finally, at that point, I was like, maybe it's time to start working with a practitioner. And that's kind of when I started looking into working with a professional who could say, this is exactly what you need to do for your body and, and start doing that. So I definitely did waste a lot of time and money. I learned a lot through the process, but I de definitely wish that if I could go back, I would have just saved all those thousands of dollars and just worked with someone. But like I said, I did learn a lot. The next thing is, um, I'm just looking at my, my notes on my sticky pad so I remember everything. Um, but I definitely wish that I didn't rush. So the next thing is when I was starting my gut journey, I was trying to rush the results. So I was kind of feeling like I, I didn't know anything at the time. And I thought that, oh, there's something wrong with my gut. I had a very medical mindset at the time. And I was like, just take a pill, fix it in a couple days, a couple weeks, and I'm good to go. So I was kind of in that like rush it mindset when I started realizing like this is taking months and months and months and I'm not feeling much better. Or like, you know, I, I maybe even if I was feeling better, I wasn't feeling amazing. That kind of started to get me down a little bit and I would try to rush the results more. But what this actually ended up doing was literally just stressing me out. I just started getting super stressed out because I was like, why am I not getting the result and the stress was actually what was flaring my gut up more, causing more gut issues. So if I could go back, I would just tell myself it takes however long it takes. I abused my gut. I have a whole podcast on what happened in the past if you're interested in listening to that. But I, it's the first episode of my podcast. But I literally had abused my gut for years. So I started to tell, like if I could go back, I would be telling myself, you abused your gut for years give it a lot of time to repair. You cannot rush it. Give your body what it needs, sit back, let your body do its thing. And if it takes months or years, so be it. The time is passing anyway. 
So just let it happen. Definitely don't rush the results. You will be a lot less stressed and a lot more at peace if you tell yourself it takes however long it takes. I am sitting back. I am not in the driver's seat. I'm letting my body repair and give it the time that it needs. You will be so much less stressed. I also wish that I didn't obsess about it. Every single minute of my gut journey was obsession. I was reading and researching and finding blogs and contacting people and practitioners and just obsessing about every single thing, every symptom that would happen. If if I woke up one morning and I felt a little bit dizzy, I'd be like, what, what did I do wrong? What's happening with my gut? Just completely freaking out. Again, if I could go back, I would say chill out a little. The body is a mysterious thing. We know so much about the body, but there's even more we don't know. You might wake up with a random symptom. It might be related to something you did the day before. It might not be. Relax. Look at the long, bigger picture of everything. If you are getting dizzy every single day for weeks or months, then start being stressed. But if it's a one, one and done thing, relax. Your body's a different creature mechanism. Things are going to happen and it's very normal for the healing journey to not be straight up, but rather to be up and down. As long as overall you're getting better, that's the important thing, but it's very common for it to kind of be like this, sometimes even like this. <laughs> so as long as, again, you're improving overall, that's what matters. But if you have a regression, a symptom, you feel like that there's a setback, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. That's just how the body heals and fixes itself. So don't obsess, put the computer away, put the books away, do your research, sure, but stop obsessing. That was something huge for me that I've now, I'm working on telling my clients the same. They're messaging me all hours of the day with a new symptom and a new issue and a new question. And I'm like, why don't we take a deep breath, just trust in the process, maybe watch something different, get your mind off of your health. Let's relax a little because the obsession is driving that stress reaction, which is going to flare up the gut because of our vagal nerve. So let's take a step back and kind of chill out a little. Um, the next thing I wish I did is actually avoid raw. So what I ended up doing when I started off my, my gut journey, again, this is where working with a practitioner would have helped. I was trying to heal my gut, but not realizing the impact that raw veggies and raw foods had on it. So I was eating like celery and carrots because they're healthy, but then still getting really bloated or still feeling like having IBS flares and loose stools and all of that fun stuff. Not really realizing at the time that when you're trying to actually fix your gut, you first and foremost have to cut out anything that can cause the gut stress or burden or strain. So raw foods, cold foods, anything hard to digest, like don't eat a steak, go for ground beef. Instead of having raw carrots and celery, put them into a, a chicken soup. Instead of having um, a big salad, have a, a smoothie or, or steam the veggies. So everything is soft, broken down, easy to digest which makes it a lot better and less inflammatory for the gut when your gut's really going through that, that thick of it, trying to repair it. You just don't want to cause any more stress or burden. And also raw veggies are very dampening. So if you are trying to fix your gut, you want to try to remove a lot of that dampness and mucus. So eating raw veggies is kind of adding to that because it's cool. It's a cold food. So going for the warming foods, the cooked foods, the easier to digest will fix your gut a million times faster. So I wish I knew that at the time. I learned that through working with a practitioner, through trial and error, then through my studies. Um, let's see this next one. So the other one, technically I said five things I wish I knew, but I'm gonna make it six. I'll give you guys a bonus too. So number five, and then I'll share the sixth one with you, is you need to do a pathogen cleanse first. One thing that I wasted time on, guys, it was like honestly a year of just trying and spending money and not getting zero results, but not only getting zero results, working backwards. I wish I knew at the time you have to clear the pathogens first. First, you rid the gut of the things that are damaging and destroying it and increasing inflammation, and then you can repair it. So if you're trying to fix your leaky gut with the gelatin and the aloe and the L-glutamine and all those great things you're not going to really get great results, especially long-term if there's still pathogens there. So first you clean up the pathogens, then you fix, soothe, and repair the gut. So that's what I wasted a lot of time on. But the last thing is it is not a one and done thing. When I 
successfully like healed my gut, I guess. Um, felt so much better. All my issues were gone. My digestion was great. My food sensitivities cleared up. I thought that that was it. I can go back to eating my pizza, my burgers, my, my junk food, my candy with no problems. And very quickly, I learned that that's not the case. I did resort back to eating all that very quickly flared up, undid all of that hard work that I had done and realized health is a lifestyle, not a one and done thing. So had I known, I would have not over consumed all those foods. It's not that you can never have them, but day to day should be eating really clean, nourishing, healthy foods. And then if you want a random treat here or there, go and have it, enjoy it, and then go back to eating really clean. And that's how you protect and keep your gut sealed long-term. Otherwise the gut keeps getting leaky, you keep regressing. So you got to work on it long-term forever, really. Taking the gelatin, the probiotics seasonally, doing all those good things to keep your gut functioning optimally. Those are my six things I wish I knew when healing my gut. Let me know yours, you can comment them down below. Definitely check out my podcast and keep your eye out on my Instagram for my gut reset challenge program. I'm so excited for it and I hope you join. Have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.